Exception handling is a really useful technique used to catch errors that occur in your program and provide the user with a better experience than a simple default error message that comes from the language. For example, if I were to have a couple variables here, I might have a program that would print x divided by y. So we're going to go ahead and set a equal to x divided by y, print it, and right now this program operates just fine. I print it and I get 5 divided by 7. Now what would happen if for some reason my variable here were set to 0? Now obviously I can't divide by 0 and if I run the program what I end up getting is this angry red error message down here. Now, it might be that I would not find an angry red error message being given to my users as something that is very professional, so I want to end up handling it in a different manner. Well, indeed, I can do that, and I can do that using something called exception handling. So this is how it works. Basically, the error that can occur is right here. So I'm going to create a try statement. And this try statement will attempt to do these lines of code. And if there is an error, then I can create a separate block of code that will do something else. So in this particular case, now if I run it, rather than getting an angry red error message, the program will basically come down here, start right here, and see that x divided by y is not going to happen. So it will not operate this print statement. It will jump from here down to the beginning of my exception handling code and start running code from there. Now, if the program operates in a correct manner and there is no error, such as I got 5 and 8 here and I run the program, then the program will run normally in that we will try this, it works fine, we try this, it works fine, and since there was no error, the program will ignore this part of the code and continue on from there. So, why would I need this rather than just simply doing an if statement right here to check to see if y is equal to zero? Well, I might have a complex equation or there might be other types of errors that I can't easily check for with an if statement. So let's go over a little bit of vocabulary with exception handling. First off, an exception can mean one of two things. It can either be a condition that results in an abnormal program flow, such as what I have right here. My exception, what I have right here, my exception would be dividing by zero. The five divided by zero is an exception, it's an error that we're not expecting and we need to handle it in a different manner. It can also mean an instance of an object that has more information about the error. We'll cover that a little bit more later. There's also the issue of exception handling. That is a whole process that we're doing right here to handle an exception that occurs right here in the normal program flow. So this process is called exception handling. The catch block or exception block is this code down here that's run when there is an exception. So this code is the exception block, also known as the catch block. In a lot of languages, they use the word catch here instead of accept. So either one could be used. Next up is throw or raise. The program will throw or raise, either word works, an error when the division by zero happens. That throwing, raising of an error can be caught down here by the catch block. So this is throwing an error and this will catch it. An unhandled exception or an uncaught exception would be the first try that I had up here 
if I don't have a try catch block, if I just had a equals x divided by y, an error would be thrown, it would not be caught, and you would get an angry error message down here at the bottom of the screen. The try block, so if this is the catch block, this is called the try block. It's the set of statements that's underneath the try statement, and the code will attempt to be run, and if there's any error, it will go down here to the exception block. Another example in using exception handling is the case where we get a string and we want to convert it into a number. Now, in this particular case, I've got a number right here that's not actually a number. If I were to pass Fred to the int command, the computer will attempt to translate Fred into a number. It has no idea how to do that, and it will end up throwing an error. So if I run this, I'm going to get error converting Fred to a number. Now, if I had 5, I can go down here and print x. If I run it this way, I get 5 back. If I type in Fred and run it, I get error converting Fred to a number, and the default value right here, I've set x in order to 0, so that I have something to work with in the following lines of code. Now, if I didn't have this at all, if I didn't have any type of exception handling, it would look like this, and when I run it, I get the error message down here because I have an uncaught exception. Now, we can actually ask the user over and over again for an integer, and if the user does not enter a correct integer, we can actually ask them again. So this is an example of code, and it's a little bit more complex because I have to keep several things. First off, I'm going to create a Boolean variable right here, number entered is equal to false. This will allow me to loop until I have a valid number entered. So to begin with, I don't have a valid number entered. Then I start a while statement. So if the number entered is equal to false, which the first time through it will be, I want to go ahead and try to enter a number. Here we go. We do an input, enter an integer with the number string. Next up, I am trying, this is my try block, I try to convert it to a number. If I'm successful, I will go down here and number entered will be true. If I'm not, this will not be executed and I will drop down here to the exception. And number entered will not be set to true. I'll come up here and it'll start the whole thing over again. So let's see how this actually works. Enter a number. I enter these letters. It's not a valid number. I enter a valid number and it goes ahead and exits. So that's a really handy pattern of code if you ever need the user to enter a number and you want to handle gracefully the user entering something that's not a valid number.